gamaka as i said it um it can transform the swara this re re ga this is a ga re ga it's quite transformed now i will demonstrate with another set of notes so you can see how the transformation happens in stages the notes that i'm going to take are different it's a different set of notes sari ga ma a pa ma ga ri sa the only difference between this and the previous set of notes is that the re is the lower variety re 1 sari ga ma a and i'm using pa also ri ga ma pa pa ma ga ga ma pa ma ga ma ga ri ga ri ga ri sa sa ri ga ri ga ma ga ma pa pa ma ga pa ma ga ri ga ma ga ri ma ga ri sa ri ga ri ga ma ga ri ga ri sa this is a more or less staccato rendition of these swaras some combinations of these swaras but the swaras rendered and in staccato fashion re ga ma the discrete now let me apply some kind of gamaka and you can see how it is different re ga ma ga ma ga ri sa sa re ga ri sa re ga ma pa ma ma ga pa ma ga ma ga ri re ga ma ga ri ma ga ri ga ri ga ri sa sa re ga ma pa ga pa ga ri sa now the same set of swaras I will apply a very different kind of gamaka, and you see how different it sounds. Pa ma ga ma ga ri sa sa ri ga ga pa ma ga ga ri ri ga ri sa ri ga ri ri ga ma ga ma ga ri. Kari sa sa da pa ma pa ga ga ma pa pa ma pa ga ga ma ga ga ma pa ga ga pa ma pa ga ma ga hi sa di ga di. the what is sang last was a raga todi which is a major raga in carnatic music before that the other kind of gentler gamaka that i applied that would be a raga called sindhu bhairavi which is actually a very popular raga used in films and other such genres light music and also we have songs in carnatic music also in sindhu bhairavi so the point of this was to show that gamakas can completely transform the sound re ga ma pa sa re ga ma pa sa re ga ma pa it's completely different so gamakas are as i said not optional in the context of a raga all notes do not have gamakas the same note we may have different gamakas given the context of the phrase and the gamaka has an internal rhythm internal tempo which is very important and the gamaka actually 
transforms the swara so much so that you don't know where is the swara and where is the gamaka it's just one integrated whole and it almost seems um, not quite comprehensible why we are giving that movement that swara sare ga the only reason why we are calling it ga is that it's between ma and ri the the actual pitch of ga may not be heard at all in the gamaka now gamaka also finds mention in many uh, lakshana granthas in many of our texts in the sanskrit uh, lakshana grantha tradition we have um a definition of gamaka in a 13th century text called sangeeta samaya sara the verse goes like this swashruti sthana sambhutayam chhayam shrutyanantarashrayam swaro yat gamed gite gamakau asau nirupitah when in music a tone moves from its own pitch towards another so that the second passes like a shadow over it it is called gamaka um though we don't find references to gamaka as such in earlier texts the word gamaka doesn't appear in the musical context um the naradiya shiksha which as i said which i have mentioned earlier it's one of the earliest texts that talks about music the naradiya shiksha has um an idea similar to this uh, to gamaka it says in the context of samaveda chanting samaveda is um one of the four vedas and uh, there is a very unique and stylized way of rendering the um saman hymns and um, um it is um it's common place to assert that indian music karnataka or hindustani has actually evolved from samaveda now how it has actually evolved that story has not been really told so it seems uncritical to simply assert that our music has come down from saman but certainly samaveda chanting is quite musical there is uh, an element of music in it and uh, it's possible to uh, think that we may be able to trace our uh, music back to saman samaveda music but in any case the point is naridhi shiksha talks about um something bordering on the concept of gamaka in the context of samaveda chanting it says this that one should proceed from one note to another from one swara to another as a shadow recedes when sunlight advances so here clearly uh the suggestion is that moving from one swara to another should not be staccato should not be like re ga so re ga it should not be like that there should be a continuity and this is essentially the idea of gamaka though the word gamaka is not used there you can see the similarity between what naradiya shiksha says here and what um, sangeeta samaya sara says 13 centuries later now ornamentation or gamaka is not unique to indian music it's not unique to carnatic music or hindustani music we have ornamentation in other forms other musical uh, traditions of the world um in fact if you listen to greek music the sound is startlingly close to indian music to carnatic music the ornamentations that they use the basic general sound of that music is very close to um indian music what can be said about gamakas in the context of carnatic music is one that it is pervasive that is 
ornamentation is not occasional gamakas are not occasional the music is uh, pervaded by gamakas you have ornamentations all through there are of course points where you have plain note singing but even there the movement from and away to that note and away from that note will usually be uh, it won't be discrete it won't be staccato so one thing is ornamentation gamakas are pervasive the second thing is that the the second point to be made is that gamakas transform the swara it is not that there is a swara and then you add something to it the whole swara the, the ornamentation in swara become one whole so that the swara so called is transformed and finally we have many kinds of gamakas documented they are documented um our the lakshana granthas speak of many kinds 15 kinds of gamakas 10 kinds of gamakas and so on and uh, in contemporary practice also we have a, a clear understanding of the kind of gamakas that are used in general we may say that in carnatic music the most characteristic gamaka ornamentation is what is called a kampita gamaka which you hear very and it sets it out sets it apart quite clearly this this gamaka this kampita or this this kind of oscillation ga ma ga ma pa ga ga this is uh kampita it's called kampita but you take another raga ga re re ga ta ra ta Hindustani music also is uh, pervaded with gamakas, but the most striking gamaka or the most characteristic gamaka of Hindustani music is, mm, if I were to take the same swaras, what I just sang was raga kalyani in Carnatic music. If I take the uh, raga with the same swaras in Hindustani music, that is called yaman. ga re ga ma re ga ni re ga no this kind of gliding moments ga re no ga that ga re re ga ni ni re ga sa not that other gamakas are not there but the most characteristic the most um most often encountered gamaka in carnatic music is the kampita the oscillating one and the in hindustani music we <coughs> the most characteristic gamaka again is neend or jaru the gliding movements from one swara to another 
this actually uh, sets these two music musical traditions apart that you hear Carnatic music with so much of the Kampita and you immediately know that yes this is Carnatic music there is in Hindustani music because of the mean and the, the jar with the, the gliding movements it has a very different texture Para 
ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಗಿರಿಜ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೋದರಿ ಗೌರಿ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಗಿರಿಜ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೋದರಿ